Good morning, it's Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word, coming from the little state of Georgia in the United States, and uh, a little bitty town, a little bitty man that God has taken and decided to use. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and the beginning of wisdom. You say, Brother Peter, do you fear the Lord? Yes, I do. Have you said things and that not abided by them and the fear of the Lord would come on you because you said something with your mouth and didn't follow it with your body? Yes. So we must be careful to follow that which we say. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7 says this, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and destruction. So if we despise the wisdom of God, when that fear comes on us, if we just shrug it off and say we're not going to have it, then we got us a problem. So what we need to do is begin to obey, be obedient in the sense of fearing the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. Now the spirit of a man is supposed to be circumspectly to God. And if the spirit is in line with God, then the flesh will follow if you please. So you must be in line with God in the spirit. Verse 3 of chapter 16. Today is the 16th day of September. Pardon me, but I got to get the yawns out of me, I reckon, this morning. Uh, commit thy way unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. We've got to commit our way unto the Lord so that our spiritual thoughts may be established in the Word of God. First place we've got to get is in the Word of God. And if we get in the Word of God, then we can, we'll have perhaps the ability to get established and and what what is establishment establishment is to be established in god now if you whatever you're established in outside of god doesn't have a whole lot of bearing on your life but in god it does now the lord hath made all things for himself yea even the wicked for the day of wrath everything that is made, God made for himself. And when he made man, he made man for himself, to worship him, to follow him, to abide by his commandments, to uh, live like you're supposed to live. Verse 4, uh, verse 5, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord, Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Verse 6. By uh, mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. I could stay right there for the rest of my few minutes that I have on tidbits from the Word this morning. And... T say something about iniquity. Iniquity is fault, the default of a Christian over and over and over again in the same area makes that area be iniquity. How do you purge that iniquity? By getting into the Word, by the fear of the Lord, by staying in the Word, by being convicted over and over again by this iniquity and then one day you will be purged of it you'll be able to drop it behind yourself and not do it have it anymore and now when a man's ways please the Lord he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him when the Lord's 
the ways of a man please the Lord, the Lord maketh his enemies to be uh, f friends with him or lay down or not say anything. Uh, verse 8. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenue without right. Listen, we've got to have the righteousness of the Lord or we're not going to have anything. So the righteousness of the Lord will come. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Now the Lord's going to direct your steps. I have got to get this behind me. Would you pardon me for this uh, uh, terrible yawning, terrible thing? I gotta get. I need maybe to get on the walker a few minutes. It said, uh, "A divine sentence is in the lips of the king; his mouth transgresseth not in judgment." A just weight and a balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. By the way, I tell the little story of a, a, a balanced weight uh, controller. Uh, back in years ago when they wanted to weigh something, they had a little bar that went across in two little containers set on chains and you'd put uh, something on one side and a counterweight on the other side. If the counterweight weighed three ounces, when, when you put got three ounces on this side, it would balance itself and be dead even. And you'd know that your weight was proper. And I tell the story of the man that was selling a pound of butter. And every now and then he'd swap his pound of butter for a pound of cheese to a man. And uh, one day he said to the man uh, that he was getting a cheese from, he said, your cheese seems to be short of a pound. What are you using for a counterweight? And the man said, I'm using your butter. And uh, you'll get that in a little bit. He was using the man's butter, so if the cheese was short, meant the butter was short. And the man was getting back what he was giving. Uh, it is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness. For the throne is established by righteousness. Kings are established by righteousness of God. And if you do abominable things as a king, it is wrong. Right lips are the light of kings, and they love him that speak right. The wrath of a king is as a uh, messenger of death but a wise man will purify it. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. Wow. Boy, and we did a little thing. Our preacher did not long ago on uh, is God in the cloud that is over your house. Is God in the cloud that is over your house? Wow. You know, God said he dwelt in a cloud, and the cloud that he dwelt in was the cloud of righteousness. And that cloud was the cloud and the cloud you need over your house. Verse 16. How much better it is to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather to be chosen and silver. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Wow. Do you have to keep your way, Brother Peter? Yes, you do. You have to keep your way. If you're going to be in the Lord and be right, you have to keep your own way. How do you keep it? You keep it by keeping in the Word. Stay in the Word day and night. I have this thing in my uh, brain, and I'm laying in bed this morning, and uh, three o'clock rolls around, and it's time for me to get up, get on this machine, and.